Uh, you can do keyframing on your video if you want to basically animate um, your scenes or how it zooms in on the camera, but in post-production, not while you're actually recording. So Adobe Premiere, it does cost money, but it is pretty solid, and I do use it in pretty much all my videos. So beyond um, just editing the video, I would say the next tool that we should be talking about is open broadcaster software. Now there's two versions of it, one of which I'm actively using to record this video, and uh, the newer one, OBS Studio, which is what I've kind of switched to as they add more features to that. And OBS is a free tool for recording screencasting, but also uh, recording and live streaming video gameplay, which I know a lot of people on YouTube are super into. Um, and you can basically use it for anything. You can even add in external uh, video devices like a camera or a webcam. Um, but all in the nice package of just having a bunch of features that are good and being able to record without taking up a massive amount of system resources. Uh, OBS is also free, so altogether it's pretty hard to beat that and I just have no complaints whatsoever about using OBS. So once you've recorded your audio, unless you happen to be in a perfect studio room environment, it's a good idea to take that audio and put it inside of a program like Audacity where you can edit out the parts you don't want. And this could apply if uh, you just maybe made some mistakes. Of course, you can edit in Adobe Premiere as well. But if the mistakes are something like a popping noise because you didn't have a proper... Uh, set up with a microphone and a pop filter or if you need to just remove some background noise or maybe someone walked in you can do a lot of stuff in audacity and it's another free program like just look at the effects list you got a lot of tools here and you can also get additional plugins it's just really handy i use noise reduction all the time it's great for uh, limiting the amount of background noise that actually makes it into your final video so you can export to mp3 or dot wave from audacity and put it back inside of adobe premiere for your final product now uh inside of youtube particularly uh one of the most important things about your video is actually not the video itself but the thumbnail of your video if you look at any major youtuber you're going to notice that they have thumbnails that often have huge text maybe have a border on their thumbnail or there's just something about it that is really eye-catching because they have to draw you in to get those views. So in Photoshop or any other tool of your choice as a free option, I would probably say GIMP, um, you can just go ahead and make new thumbnails. Maybe you bring in part of the uh, background from the video, like a screenshot from the video, and you edit that in Photoshop to make it more interesting. So you could just go file new and make a uh, 16 by 9 uh, thumbnail size that's what YouTube likes to use so you're talking 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080 and just edit it make it nicer give it some huge text which tells people about what your video is about I mean you have about two or three seconds not even to make an impression so you might as well make it count by luring them in now uh, this recommendation may seem a little bit odd but I also would say that uh, Windows Media Player Classic is a very good tool for video editing, especially for YouTube. Going back to the whole idea of thumbnails, um, you can easily capture any moment in a video as a image, um, basically in the same size as the video file itself, and export that really easily by going to File and Save Image and then just choosing a location on your computer, like your desktop, to save that screenshot. So if you wanna make a thumbnail that is using your video in some way to make it more relevant, like having the video footage as the background and then adding text in front, then you can capture those really easily by opening up your video file in Media Player Classic, capturing the image and exporting it. So as far as my video editing needs are concerned, these are the top five apps I use all the time. And of course, naturally, I would recommend them. So go ahead and check them out, especially the ones that are free. There's no reason not to try Media Player Classic, Audacity, uh, or even OBS Studio. And if you do have a little money or you just want to go ahead and do the free trial, Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop are solid tools, very commonly recognized and very solid. Aside from that, I've been Chris. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in my future videos.